Well, it's Christmas Day and millions of people are celebrating the holiday with family and friends. The first family is in Florida celebrating at the Winter White House. Good Morning East Texas, John Borns has more. Well, as for the weather, most Americans won't have to dream about a white Christmas. More than 60 million people are in areas under winter weather alerts this week. North Korea is responding to the newest round of UN sanctions. This morning, the regime is calling them a quote act of war. North Korea is also warning that the US and other nations that support the sanctions will pay a heavy price. The response comes days after the UN Security Council unanimously adopted the US drafted sanctions over its nuclear weapons program. The new sanctions cut exports of gas, diesel and other refined oil products by 89%. They also ban exports of industrial equipment, machinery and vehicles to North Korea. Countries using workers from North Korea must send them back in the next 24 months. The sanctions also require countries to stop illegally providing oil through ship to ship transfers. Now this is the 10th round of sanctions against North Korea passed by the UN since 2006. A Corpus Christi police officer was hit by a suspected drunk driver Saturday night. The officer was responding to a separate crash at the time. He was taken to a hospital nearby for emergency surgery. There's now no word on his condition at this hour. The driver was detained and charges are expected. New this morning, we're learning Guatemala will join the Trump administration and move its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Guatemalan President Jimmy Morales made the announcement on his Facebook account. Last week, Guatemala, along with U.S. and seven other nations, voted no on a U.N. resolution condemning President Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The U.N. voted to declare President Trump's decision null and void. At least 32 people are dead this morning after a passenger bus veered off a bridge and plunged into a river in western India. Officials say the bus was trying to pass another vehicle when it crashed through the bridge railing. Right now, it's not clear if the driver survived or how many people were on the bus. Statistics show India has the world's highest road accident death toll, with more than 110,000 people dying each year in crashes. The latest version of President Trump's travel ban will remain in effect despite an appeals court ruling that it violates federal law. The 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals says the travel ban exceeds the president's authority. The judges also say the ban does not adequately explain why people from certain countries are a danger. However, it's still in effect because the Supreme Court ruled it could be enforced while challenges make their way through the courts. It's time for our Good Morning East Texas Birthday Club. In celebrity birthday, singer Annie Lennox is 63. Singer Jimmy Buffett is 71 and actress Sissy Spacek is 68. If you want to sign up for our birthday club, head to KLTV.com or KTRE.com. Click on the Win Stuff tab and happy birthday to all of you on Wednesday. Hunter, back to you. Thanks, Katie. And I know we talked about it earlier, but it's hard to believe that we, I know I'm complaining about this cold weather when the north is seeing it much worse than yeah, we are. Below zero temperatures well up to the north of us. So even though I would be complaining about this too, that makes me complain a little bit less. Absolutely. Definitely puts it in perspective. That's right. Thanks, Katie. Well, new this morning, the Kilgore Police Department and the Kilgore Fire Department responded to this house fire. It happened shortly before 2 o'clock this morning on Memorial Street. There's no word on whether anyone was hurt or a possible cause at this hour. Kilgore Police believe the property is an abandoned home. A Sunday night house fire is under investigation in Hudson. The home on the Magnolia Bend Drive caught fire about 6 o'clock last night. There were two people in the home at the time of the fire, but they both escaped unharmed. The Hudson Fire Chief says it's still unknown what caused the fire. It is a sad story. It's tragic for them to lose their house on Christmas Eve. And uh, plus, you see, we done did a countywide page for all departments to come to assist us with water because we're having water difficulties. And uh, we're going to do whatever we can to help these people out. The fire chief says the Red Cross will provide shelter and supplies for the family as needed. Three children were injured in a house fire over the weekend. Early Sunday morning, the Smith County Fire Department was called to a home on County Road 273. Authorities say the fire started in the living room and was caused by a Christmas tree and a space heater. All three children were in the living room. Two of them, toddlers, were treated and released from a local hospital, but a four-year-old was taken by ambulance to Dallas Parkland Memorial Hospital. Their condition is not yet known. 
Prosecutors are seeking to seize nearly $1 million in property from an East Texas minister and his family who were convicted this summer of fraud charges for using hurricane relief funds to pay off personal expenses and fund their Jasper Church. Walter Diggles, the former executive director of the Deep East Texas Council of Governments, was convicted in August of 17 counts of wire fraud and other charges. His wife and children also were convicted of fraud, money laundering, and conspiracy charges. An assistant U.S. attorney is now asking a judge to order the forfeiture of more than $970,000 in property purchased with the funds intended to help with recovery from Hurricanes Rita, Katrina, Ike, and Dolly. The Tyler Police Department is investigating a fatal crash just before 430 Sunday morning. Police were called to the 2400 block of West Northwest Loop 323. Investigators say a cart veered off the roadway, causing it to roll several times. The driver, 18 year old Gustavo Espinoza, died at the scene. Two passengers were taken to a local hospital with non life threatening injuries. Investigators observed evidence of alcohol and have requested an autopsy on Espinoza. And to follow up for you now, both suspects wanted on a burglary charge in Palestine are now in jail. On Friday morning, police responded to a suspicious person's report and arrested 22 year old Ronnie Morrison after he was found in possession of stolen property. A second suspect ran off. That person was later identified as 22 year old Romello Smith. Smith was arrested Saturday night in Fairfield and remains in the Freestone County Jail. Christmas is a time of giving and uh, of gratitude, so um, what better way to show that than to give a hot meal to those in need. Manhattan's restaurant in downtown Lufkin handed out close to 600 spaghetti meals on Christmas Eve. Now this is their ninth year for doing the holiday tradition. The family owned restaurant says they like to lend a helping hand by cooking up a hot meal on Christmas Eve. And just in case you don't want to do any Christmas Day cooking, we've made a list of restaurants open today. You can find that list at KLTV or KTRA.com. Just click on the big red box and there you will find a link. And coming up on GMAT, a grandmother gets to spend Christmas with her family thanks to a seven-year-old's actions. We'll meet the boy many are calling a hero after saving his grandmother's life during a medical emergency. Outside right now at your Grant and Flannery neighborhood weather net site, it is a chill. Plus, dreams of a white Christmas have turned to a nightmare for millions across the Midwest and Northeast. This morning, the bitter cold is on the move. Good morning, East Texas, and thanks for joining us. Today is Monday, December 25th, and Katie, that cold air on the move, mm -hmm. not quite in East Texas, but it's definitely cold here. It is. It's chilly here. We're well below, and they spread through the rest of East Texas by tomorrow afternoon. And rain and cold, just not a good mixture. They never are. Mm. Never. Thanks, Katie. <sighs> North Korea is responding to the newest round of UN sanctions. This morning, the regime is calling them a quote, act of war. North Korea is also warning that the US and other nations that support the sanctions will pay a heavy price. The response comes days after the UN Security Council unanimously adopted the US drafted sanctions over its nuclear weapons program. We have asked the North Korean regime to choose the path of peace. We will continue to match the Kim's re Kim regime's choice of aggressive actions with actions of international sanction. The new sanctions cut exports of gas, diesel, and other refined oil products by 89%. They also ban exports of industrial equipment, machinery, and vehicles to North Korea. Countries using workers from North Korea must send them back in the next 24 months. The sanctions also require countries to stop illegally providing oil through ship to ship transfers. This is the 10th round of sanctions against North Korea passed by the UN since 2006. The UN budget is seeing a massive decline. That's according to U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. In a news release, Haley said the U.S. negotiated a spending cut of more than $285 million. Haley said the move is, quote, historic and keeps the UN accountable. The new budget will go into effect for the upcoming fiscal year. Latest version of the president's travel ban will remain in effect despite an appeals court ruling that it violates federal law. The 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals says the travel ban exceeds the president's authority. The judges also say the ban does not adequately explain why people from certain countries are a danger. However, it's still in effect because the Supreme Court ruled it could be enforced while challenges make their way through the courts. 
New this morning, we're learning Guatemala will join the Trump administration and also move its embassy to Israel to Jerusalem. Guatemalan President Jimmy, Jimmy Morales made the announcement on his Facebook page. Last week, Guatemala, along with U.S. and seven other nations, voted no on a U.N. resolution condemning President Trump's re re recognition rather, of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The U.N. voted to declare President Trump's decision null and void. On this Christmas morning, winter storm warnings are in effect from northern New York to Maine. Meantime, millions in the Midwest are waking up to freezing and blustery conditions. ABC's Elizabeth Hur joins us. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning to you and for millions who wanted a white Christmas.